Joining us on the program right now, Emily Miller of the Washington Times. Emily, how are you this afternoon? Well, you know, um, I'll just jump right onto this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know that Diane Feinstein has a 22 long rifle in her list of banned, 157 banned guns. So I don't know if it's a direct effect, but maybe people are reading that and running to the store and buying one. Maybe. I, you know, it, it, look, it used to be uh, that, that 22 long rifle was, you know, it was still affordable and you could still find it. Um, and now you just you can't. I mean, you just right. you just you just can't. You know, I talk and to the how guy. Many, how, how many deaths a year are from the, uh, from someone shooting a twenty two rifle? I just uh, I'm curious. If there's three hundred a year from all rifles, I'd be curious to know how many people like miss the tin can <laughs> and killed their neighbor. I just think it's very, very, very unlikely. But well, apparently it's going to be banned. It, well, but look, look, it's not about safety. I mean, and you know this. It's not about reducing yeah. violent crime. It's not. It most certainly is not about, uh, uh, you know, trying to stop another new town. I, I, you know, as we heard Vice President Biden, uh, he was in Virginia on Friday. This was billed beforehand as, you know, President, uh, Vice President Biden hits the road trying to drum up public support for gun control. And then this was a private meeting. It wasn't open to the public. Uh, but apparently uh, the, the quote-unquote assaultman's ban was not brought up. Uh, the uh, quote unquote magazine, uh, you know, high capacity magazine ban was not brought up. According to those who were there, uh, they said the vice president talked specifically uh, and almost totally about the idea of quote unquote universal background checks, which, you know, again, we know the criminals aren't going to obey those laws. We know there's still going to be a black market in illegal firearm transfers. And we also know that the killer in Connecticut stole his mother's firearms and his mother was legally allowed to purchase them. So the idea of universal background checks preventing Newtown, would, that would not have happened. Uh, that's accurate. And that's why I'm writing this four-part series in the Washington Times this week on dispelling gun myths, because these gun grabbers like Obama, like Senator Feinstein, Biden, all of them, Bloomberg, they are using the language. They're using these myths to change public opinion. And they've been effective. The polls are showing that more people are for all of these things, from assault weapon ban, high-capacity magazine ban, the so-called universal background check. And it's because of the language, and it's because of, I don't want to say lies, but I'll say either exaggerations or leaving out the truth that's going on mm -hmm. um, with these national politicians. And so you know, I wrote on Friday dispelling the myth on assault weapons, and today it's the myth of the high-capacity magazines, and I'll be doing one tomorrow on the armor-piercing bullet or cop-killer bullet. And finally, as you just mentioned, um, this supposed 40 percent that are buying their guns privately in the gun show loophole, which, again, is another myth. And why I'm doing this is for education, because people who aren't, you know, in the world that you and I are in every day and listening and reading and studying it don't know these things and, I, and you know i'm only a year into this i haven't even owned a gun for a year and these are things i wouldn't have known last year i mean i first saw an ar my editor richard had one and wanted me to shoot it and i i, I use the words it's too scary i don't want a scary gun so you know i understand i'm very familiar to me because i've been there but we can't govern and we can't legislate based on emotions. And that's what happened in New York. That's what's happening today in Connecticut as they're having these poor families from Newtown testify in this hearing on passing new gun control bills. It's, it's knee-jerk. Obviously, all this legislation, whether it is Dianne Feinstein's or Cuomo's or Connecticut, has been in the pipeline for years. Find our, um, Senator Lautenberger from New Jersey's built on high-capacity magazines, that he calls them, has been in the pipeline for since, since the Tucson shooting. And they were just looking for the right opportunity to shove them through, and they're absolutely exploiting this terrible tragedy in Newtown and this, all of our emotions about that and, and using all these words incorrectly and facts incorrectly. And so far they're being very effective on the state level. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, and, and, you know, again, a, a huge part of this is now the public relations push. And that's why, Emily, I'm so glad that you're writing this piece, because their public relations push uh, demands that they mislead the public. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, when you've got uh, uh, folks who don't know a lot about farms other than the fact that they really, really don't like them uh, and they want to get them, you know, out of as many hands as uh, of law-abiding Americans as they can. As we heard Senator Feinstein say last week, we want to dry up the supply of these guns over time. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this type of fact-checking, um, I think it needs to be done. So 
when it comes to the 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 high capacity magazine myth, where do the anti gunners uh, start to mislead the public? Primarily by what they call it, high capacity magazine. I'll say my SIG two two nine. I got last, like I said, last February, and DC has one of these limits. That's on ten rounds, and I think because I never saw my gun before it caught here. It came with 13 rounds, so I couldn't buy it just off the Internet that came in the box of the manufacturer. I had to buy it from a dealer who would take that, put, replace it with the exact same magazines that have a little metal slap in them to prevent three extra rounds from being put in them. So, But my gun under this provision is considered high capacity. It's not high capacity. It's standard capacity. And, you know, I think if we could do a poll, and say to people, do you support a ban on high-capacity magazines? We've seen it now, and it's about like 60%. I mean, it's become over 50%. But I would like to ask those same exact people, that 60%, what is high-capacity in your view? And I would bet you that all of them, if not 90% of them, would say 30 rounds, 50 rounds, 100 rounds. That's what people are thinking. But when you say high-capacity and you're referring to 11 or 12, that's a deliberate attempt to confuse the public. Yeah, I, no, I agree with you. Uh, and as you point out, I thought this was interesting. There was a, a study uh, that, that you see was linked on Senator Feinstein's own website. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, she is, she's the queen of just excluding information that doesn't support her <laughs> argument. Um, you know, at least I try to give, you know, the, both sides arguments in these things that people know. Um, and there's this huge study done for the Department of Justice by one of her top research people who always do things to support her. And unfortunately, he had to exclaim that most assailants in these crimes who use guns get off a total of four shots. That's net nationwide. It's an average. It's a 10-year-old study, so it's been going on for a long period of time. I think this fairly sure the study was done at the end of the assault weapon ban when there was a 10-round limit. So the point is is that 10 rounds is way more than the average criminal is using. And way, so there is really no reason that we have to have a new limit put on. And, look, we know for a fact same thing with the assault weapon ban. Limiting magazines to 10 rounds does nothing to eliminate crime. Didn't for the 10 years. It was in effect. The FBI said we don't need this. And I'd also say just from... A, a defense and self-defense measure for someone if you're protecting yourself and i know since i'm a new shooter if someone comes into my home and it's the middle of the night and i'm shocked i'll be lucky if anything i shoot hits the person i mean i'm going to be scared i'm going to be shaking my heart's going to be racing i highly doubt what if there's two people so if you live in new york and you two guys come in, what are the chances you're going to bring down and stop them at 7? I don't know. Probably not that good. So this is such a direct assault. It's a direct assault on the Constitution. Obviously, ammunition is an end run to get at guns. But really, it's a very big danger for a matter of self-defense. And I'd like to see what's going to happen when someone does get stuck in one of these 10-round ones, like in places like D.C., and, you know, a gang walks in of 10 people, you, you know. Um, <laughs> So it's really uh, it's, it's a very dangerous effort that they're doing, and they're making it sound like it not, has nothing to do with guns. Um, and they may, and they also, you know, per, go back to deliberately go back to these mass shootings where they use these, say, the 30-round standard mag and an AR, which the people know jam often and what would think happened in Aurora, though we've never seen the police report or coronary report. Um, so it, it's not – there's there's so many factual reasons that the high-capacity magazine law is completely unnecessary. But by this national push, PR push, that's being paid for by Bloomberg, that's being perpetuated by Feinstein, by Obama, it's having a really big impact in the states. And that's how states like Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Hawaii are able to – push through legislation, which they're all doing, Maryland, which they're all doing right now, to limit magazines because of this national push. Talking with Emily Miller of the Washington Times. And, and you know, again, Emily, I mean, we saw this back in the 90s, the, the attempt to define, and it goes on today, the attempt to define uh, one of these semi-automatic rifles as a quote-unquote assault weapon. And so, you know, when we start playing fast and loose with the language, when you can uh, when, when, you know, high-capacity magazine, as you say, has no definition. I mean, what is high-capacity? Mayor Bloomberg said a couple of weeks ago that, you know, in his opinion, uh, anything over three rounds would be a, quote-unquote, <laughs> high-capacity magazine. Uh, the it's yeah, go ahead. Shocking. And, you know, what they want, obviously what they want is to get rid of guns. And then if they can't get rid of all guns, they want us all to be down to single shots. 
which is completely useless, except for the police. So they want the government and the police, law enforcement, to have as many arms as you want. And then that brings us right back to why the Founding Fathers put the Second Amendment in. It, you know, it's, it is somewhat for self-defense, but it was prevention from the tyranny of government. And if we only have the police and law enforcement and military having guns that have an amount of ammunition as stopping power, then, then who knows what could happen, and that's the danger to the Constitution. Of course, uh, we were also hearing, Emily, that, uh, you know, the Constitution is old and outdated and uh, we should just ignore it whenever we uh, when, whenever we want to. You know, I've got to ask you as well about uh, Carolyn McCarthy. I don't know if you saw this piece on uh, Piers Morgan uh, uh, where uh, Piers Morgan asked her, you know, well, what about the idea that uh, uh, people have a right to own these uh, AR-15s for uh, self-defense? And she said, well, you know, look, if you talk to hunters... If you talk to sportsmen, they'll they'll tell you that a rifle is 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 much better because a rifle is going to be accurate. You know, like she what? didn't. Yeah, she didn't know the difference. Uh, apparently, either she did, and she just decided, ah, what the heck? I'll just go ahead and try to confuse everybody, or and, she didn't. No, they. I believe that they deliberately misuse language. First of all, I don't watch Piers Morgan. It is so annoying. <laughs> he's so arrogant, and he's the lecturing and the British on us on our Second Amendment is so annoying. I don't know how anybody could bear to watch that show but they definitely deliberately misuse things and because they want us because they know that uncle joe's hunting rifle sounds a lot less scary than a black ar-15 and looks a lot less scary but they don't but and most people don't know that they function exactly the same and it's it's a very good pr effort it's been going on for 20 30 years by these guys they know what they're doing they've pulled this stuff well very effective, but I will clarify for her that the National Shooting Sports Foundation did a survey of AR owners, and first I think is very interesting is almost half of them are former law enforcement or military. Mm -hmm. so they're not killing people. They use them because they're familiar with them. Um, and secondly, as they said 90% of them use them for target practice, 80% use them for home defense, and I think 60% use them for hunting. So that's, that's what people are, who own them are saying they're used for, as opposed to Carolyn McCarthy just inventing stuff. But it, it goes back to what you know, Diane Feinstein said on CBS yesterday. She said all the gang members out there are primarily using AK-47s. What? I thought, <laughs> what? If, if I see a gang member walking on the streets of Washington, D.C. with a big wooden rifle, I mean, A, you're going to run away. I <laughs> mean... He's not going to get you, yeah. and it's not a very good job of concealing. And I mean, it's just the stupidest thing to say. But they know that it scares people. That people don't. People think AK-47s that are in the civilian market are automatic, and even though we know they're semi-automatic. And you know, Obama though will say, he said this recently: we need to ban all automatic weapons. We need to get them off the streets. Now, the man graduated from Harvard Law School. You're telling me he doesn't know that automatic weapons have been pretty much banned since 1937? It, you know, so I know that they do, I believe that they deliberately are misleading the public, and unfortunately, they're doing a very good job of it, Cam. Well, they, they are. Uh, I, on the other hand, Emily, I think that the, the gun owners out there, as well as uh, let's say a certain portion of the American public um, are 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 not buying into this, and you know are starting to see some of these attempts, like the president uh, saying uh, in this New Republic uh, interview over the weekend that you know I go skeet shooting all the time at uh, Camp David. I, I think there's a lot of Americans out there. I'd like to think even some who aren't gun owners, uh, who who may not know quite what to think about this issue, who hear this and say, "Oh, now come on." I mean, come on. I hope. I think the further time we get away from Newtown, because people are just acting in emotion, and I understand that feeling of we have to do something. Everybody wants to do something. And that's, I think, a consensus around everyone, whether gun owner or not, is we want to do something to prevent tragedies like this, to prevent our children from getting hurt. Sensible things, hopefully, but it became anything, and it's been an excuse for anti-gun politicians to shove legislation through in the middle of the night, like happened in New York. Um, so I think that, I hope so, that people are taking the time to learn the terminology, to learn the facts, and to learn, quite simply, what does law enforcement, what has the government already proven works to reduce crime and what hasn't. And as gun ownership has gone up, in the, and especially since the assault weapon ban was lifted in 2004, violent crime has decreased 17%. I mean, that tells you something. Absolutely. Emily Miller of the Washington Times, thank you for your time this afternoon. Always a pleasure, and I uh, hope we can do it again soon. Of course. Nice to talk to you.